Hi! So, this is my second go at making this video. The first one, I shot the entire thing and realised it was out of focus. Um, this is a guitar tutorial for Starcross Lovers. It's from the new album from John Smith, The Fray. Uh, it's a really great album. If you've not listened yet, I really recommend you check it out. Uh, so yeah, I'll play it through first and I'll talk through how to play it. Um, okay. <laughs> So some of you may be able to figure it out just based on, on watching me play that, uh, but I'll talk through what I'm doing as well. Um, if you have any suggestions for John Smith songs that you'd like me to try and figure out and uh, post a video for, just leave a comment. I'd really like to put out more, more than one video every two years, which I think is what I'm averaging at the moment. Um, so yeah, if you've got any, any suggestions or any comments, uh, if you think there's any corrections that need to be made, uh, yeah, let me know down below. Okay, so uh, the recording, and obviously what I just played, is on a, on a nylon guitar. I think it sounds really, really nice on a classical guitar, uh, but I'm much more used to playing a steel string. So I'll swap back over just to show you uh, what I'm doing. So we tune down to, to drop D, and uh, for me, the trickiest part of this song was just getting the picking part sorted. Um, the chord shapes aren't that difficult. Uh, the picking part's not either, but it's just not a, not a picking pattern that I've already used before so it took me a little while for my fingers to get used to it. So uh, we'll talk through that first of all. Once you've got the picking part down, uh, the rest of the song comes fairly easily. It's not, not too difficult to learn and sounds really, really lovely. So uh, the driving part for the picking is, is always going to be the thumb. Uh, and instead of your sort of your standard Travis picking of for this you're going to be playing one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Two. So that's one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and then you're only going to be playing the only other things you're going to be using are the index finger and the middle finger. Uh, and all you're going to be doing is playing thumb, index, and then thumb and middle together. I've just picked a D chord here just to show you. that last one, you can either just play thumb index together or play in another index for the very last 16th note of the, of the bar, so either or that last note there. 
both work, just whichever feels most comfortable to you while you're, while you're playing. And that's it, that's all the, the right hand's doing throughout the song. Uh, the bass note changes, so sometimes you're playing on the, on the fifth string rather than the sixth string, uh, but all the rest. It's just getting used to playing that comfortably again and again, because that's, that's what's happening throughout the song. So, once you feel comfortable with that, uh, it's time to look at the, the chord shapes. So, to take the, the verse to start with, uh, you're going to be playing the second fret on the third string and the fifth fret on the on the bass on the B string, well, on the, the D string for us on the sixth string. Uh, Technique-wise, you should probably be playing that with your with your pinky finger on the on the bottom string. Uh, I've got quite long fingers, and I just always naturally end up playing it with my ring finger. Definitely don't copy anything about my technique because I don't have any. Um, but either case, fifth fret on the bottom string and second fret on the third string. Uh, what we'll do is I'll go through all the chords first without the picking part, and then we can add, add the picking part in. That probably be the easiest. So starting there, then you're going to move from the fifth fret down to the fourth fret. And then to an E minor chord. Because you're in drop D, the E minor, you're going to have to play uh, the second fret and the bottom string as well. So we've got. And from there, you're going to move to the A minor shape. So from A minor. Just bar with your index finger across the first fret of the third and second string. So you've got two one one, two one one, then two zero one, and then back to two two one. And then from there you're going to move to a D shape. Uh, forgetting about the top string, you don't play the top string at all in this in this song. Uh, so just second fret on the third string and third fret on the second, then playing the fourth fret on the on the bottom string, and then playing it with the A as the bass note, and then you're back to the start. So in terms of how that fits with timing. Playing that as a step down to the last beat of that second bar before you go into the E minor. So for that E minor there, you're playing the uh, the bottom of the string is the bass note for that first one, first time round, then the fifth string. Same again, bottom string. Then to the A minor, obviously you're going to be playing the, the A as your bass note rather than the bottom string. Then back to the start. So just all the way through slowly. Second time through in the verse, it's all exactly the same apart from the very end there when you're going up the D. So then the second time you're gonna play just move up to the fifth fret. So a little bit better. And that leads you into the chorus. 
Uh, the chorus, again, the, the chord shapes themselves aren't too difficult, but you do move through them a little bit, a little bit quicker. So to start with, you can be playing just an A minor shape. And then you're going to change the bass note to an E, so you're going to play the second fret on that on that bottom string there. So it's going to go. shape. And then from there, you're going to move your index finger across to the second fret. So, back to the A minor, same thing again. So, again to the A minor. And then back to the D. Second fret, fourth fret. And that's the first half of the chorus. So nice and slowly, that's going to be. And then the second half. You can move up to the fifth fret on the bottom string and the fourth fret on the third string. Then you're going to go from there down to the fourth fret on the bottom and the second fret on the third. So. Third fret on the on the bass string, uh, on the sixth string. Third fret on the fourth string. Open third string. First fret on the second string. And then you're going to move your index finger across to the first fret, of the fourth string, and you're going to play the second fret of the 6th string and the 4th string. So. so that's... Uh... Personally, as I was working through this, uh, I found it quite difficult to make that jump to getting my fingers to hit really accurately and not end up muting the other strings, especially on the steel string where they're slightly closer together. Um, I find it really hard to know how, what level to judge these, to pitch these videos at because as I say, I'm freaking this all out by ear as I go along and I don't really have a lot of technique. I'm guessing a lot of people that listen to John Smith songs have a lot of technique. Uh, so apologies if this is teaching you to suck eggs, uh, but uh, will I the way that I've found easiest to get into those those chord positions is because of your picking pattern, you've actually got an extra beat uh, to get this uh, fourth this fourth string position in shape. So when you go from I actually just move my uh, the same two fingers, so down to the third and then across to the, to the third string and the first fret there, and then Put the index, put the ring finger on because you've got that extra beat. So nice and slowly. Because you've got that. You've got two notes before you have to worry about that pinky finger. And the same thing here. Again, that might be completely obvious to you, uh, but when I figured out that I had that extra beat to get my uh, pinky finger 
into the right place, uh, it made the whole thing a lot easier for me. So just in case that's helpful to you as well. So, uh, where are we up to? So we've just played down to... So from there, you're going to move across to the A minor shape. So that's A minor, then moving the uh, middle finger across to the second fret of the fifth string, taking the middle finger off and up to the C shape. And then, this is the only part of the song that I'm not a hundred, like, completely sure of what he's playing. Well, I might have made mistakes here as well. This is the part that I'm the, the least sure of what, what exactly he's playing, because he's playing it very, very quietly. Uh, and there's actually a few different chord shapes that would work here. So I think he's playing from the C shape, the uh, fourth fret on the fourth string, and the second fret on the... Uh, third string. But it would also work to play just the fourth fret and uh, an open third string, or even to play the, uh, the fourth fret on the fourth string and the third fret on the second string. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to play it as just there. Fourth fret on the fourth string, second fret on the third string. So uh, ring finger comes off, and second fret with the thumb there, and then fourth fret uh, on the on the bass on the sixth string, and then you're back to the start. So as I say, I'm not totally sure about that chord there. Could also be. Honestly, at that point of the song, it's played very, very softly, and it, like I say, all of them kind of fit within the song, so you can play whichever, whichever works for you. Um, so, to go through the whole chorus uh, nice and slowly, it's going to sound like this. Sorry. That's it. That's, that's really the, the whole song. Uh, the last time he plays through the chorus, he plays that second part. He plays that through twice. Uh, but other than that, that's, that's the, the whole structure of the song. Uh, the only other thing that I would say that, that really helped me while I was figuring this out, getting it to a point where it sounded kind of nice to play and listen to, is uh, in the song dynamics are really, really important. So throughout the song, he's playing sort of really quietly to the point that you can only hear the bass notes in some parts. Um, and while I was getting used to that, uh, the way that I was practicing it was to basically get quieter through each bar. So starting off at a, at a normal volume. If you play the whole thing just at the same volume throughout, it will sound, it's actually quite busy. Uh, you're playing sort of most of the eighth notes with this, with this pattern. Uh, so making sure you pay attention to dynamics is a really, really good way to make it sound a little bit more interesting and uh, flow a little bit better as well. So, that's everything. Uh, I hope that's been helpful. Um, I don't really have any guitar theory knowledge at all. I'm just figuring this out all by ear. And honestly, the reason why I'm figuring this out is because it's, it's how I'm learning guitar and getting better at it. So if you've got any suggestions, any comments, I'd really, really like to hear them. Um, as I said before, if you've got any suggestions for other videos, let me know. Um, and if you end up using this to, uh, to learn the song yourself, and especially if you end up kind of recording, performing, uh, giving it a go, please record it and post it and, and leave a link in the comments so I can have a look. I'd really love to see them. Um, yeah, thanks very much. Bye.